Good morning, class. I'm Dukesh Mishra, and today we are going to talk about human uh, transportation in humans. This is topic for class 10. Transportation basically implies to supply of something, a component, from one location to the other location. So here in our body, in human system, this is done by our blood. The blood is responsible for carrying enzymes from one location to another, hormones from one location to other, wherever it's required, and most importantly, the food, the nutrients from one location to another. We talked about digestive system in our last classes. We saw that food was being digested in the system, absorbed in the small intestine through villi's, and that got absorbed into the blood. And now that blood flows throughout the body and supplies the materials to the site wherever it is required. Now friends, this overall transportation or the movement of blood is controlled by an organ in our body and that organ is called the human heart. Okay, that organ is human heart. So that's the topic for today. We'll discuss this topic human heart in two lectures. First, today I'm going to talk about different components of the human heart. I have labeled 16 components of human heart. We'll talk about them. And then in the next lecture, we'll talk about the functioning of each. The comprised com functioning of each, we'll talk about how they all come together to function as one unit, as one organ. So, what we are going to do today is, I have drawn a diagram, I have labeled the positions of different components in human heart and that I have labeled over here, we'll talk about each and their basic function in human heart. So, let's start. So, the first thing which you should know and I guess you are already aware of it is that every human consists of one heart and that heart is located in the thorax region, the chest. This portion of ours is known as the chest and that chest is bounded by bony structure called the rib cage. The rib cage is a very hard protective layer covering made up of hard bones which basically acts to protect the inner line organs. Basically the lungs and the heart. This heart is located somewhat left to the center of the rib cage. Almost at the position where my mic is, has been adjusted. This is the center, you can touch your collarbone and this becomes the center and this is located somewhat left to the center of the rib cage. Okay, we have already also studied in our last class that mammals have a four chambered heart and since we humans belong to mammals, so we also have a four chambered heart. So let us first look into the structure. What we have drawn over here today is a epithelial system. It is being curved at the edges. It is somewhat like this. Curved at the edge, broader at the top and quite tapering at the bottom. You see this structure. While drawing this structure, it will be very necessary. This structure which you see over here today is a systematic diagram of working of human heart. You can find a few better diagrams in your books. Okay, so this diagram will make the understanding of the things quite easy. Okay, so let us talk about this. This is the human heart, the wall of the human heart. This is divided into four chambers. Each has been leveled over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
I guess where is the 15, 15 and 16. So let us talk about these components. Okay, so the first component which we are going to talk about is pericardial membrane. So I, this is number one and I have labeled number one over here. So you can see this, the complete structure of human heart and there is a line which I have drawn over here and mark it number one. Actually this is not a line, this is an outer protective covering of the human heart. This is the outermost protective covering of human heart. This actually runs down to the whole system. Being a lack of space, I have not drawn this in the whole area but this will be present as a continuous membrane throughout the structure of heart. So this structure is called pericardial membrane. This is the protective layer of the outermost protective layer of the human heart. Okay, then let us come to number three. I'm skipping number two. We'll talk about it. Then we'll talk about number three. That is the heart wall. This is number three. I call it heart wall. This is the actual wall of the human heart, which basically is made up of cardiac muscles and this decides the structure, shape and size, the boundary of the human heart. Shape, size, structure and boundary. Shape, size, structure and the boundary of the human heart. Okay. Then come to number two, pericardial membrane. This pericardial membrane number two has been marked between one and three. Sorry, this is pericardial fluid, sorry. So this has been marked between number one and three, this. This is a space between pericardial membrane and the heart wall and this is filled up by a dense fluid. This is filled up with a dense fluid and that dense fluid is called pericardial fluid. So basically all these three are involved in absorbing external shocks or injuries which may be may have been produced due to certain threat, injury, accidents and in turn these ab uh, shock absorbing techniques protect our heart from being damaged. So first of all there is the presence of a ribcage which will protect our heart. We know heart is a very delicate organ. So there is the presence of ribcage which will protect our heart. Then inside it there is a pericardial membrane then pericardial fluid these two will absorb and in case something is left behind then comes heart wall which will again absorb the shock and protect the heart then is septa here you can see number four number four this partitioning part is called the septa s-e-p-t-a septa this there are two types of septa, the horizontal or vertical septa and the horizontal septa. These run, run continuous over the margins and divide the heart into four chambers. Okay, so this division is called the septa. Then we talk about superior vena cava, inferior vena cava and vena cava. So this is the position of superior vena cava, inferior vena cava and vena cava. So let us see this as you can see are two pipelines which are coming together and forming a single unit. So basic function of this is number five that is superior vena cava collects all the blood from the upper part of the body. May upper part of the body means all the parts of body which lies to the upper part of the level of human heart. Anything which lies, any part of body, organ or cell which lies above to the, above to the level of human heart that has been, that the blood from that position is collected by superior vena cava. And anything which lies lower to this level of heart, the blood from that parts is collected by inferior vena cava superior vena cava inferior vena cava 
and these two combine together to form number seven called vena cava. Okay, then is number eight aorta. Aorta it has a basic function of supplying the blood to different parts of the body from the heart. This vena cava system brings the blood to the heart brings blood to the heart from different parts of the body and this aorta supplies the blood to other parts of body from heart okay then comes number 9 bicuspid and tricuspid wall bicuspid and tricuspid wall to denote the b by 2 and tri 3 I have marked three lines or two lines over here bicuspid and tricuspid valves. As the name suggests, these are two valves which has a basic function of carrying the blood from the upper chamber to the lower chamber. As you can see, they are forming a pathway between upper chamber and the lower chamber. So the blood from the upper uh, this is right side and this is the left side. Okay, you can stand in front of the diagram and see this is the right side and this is the left side. So this is the right part of the heart, this is the right part of the heart, and this is the left part of the heart. So between the right upper chamber and right lower chamber, there is a bicuspid wall, and between the left upper chamber and left lower chamber, there is a tricuspid wall. The two walls are unidirectional in nature. Unidirectional in nature. This means they will not allow the flow of blood from, they will allow the flow of blood from upper chamber to the lower chamber and will not allow the flow of blood from lower chamber to upper chamber. That's called a unidirectional flow, unidirectional wall. They will allow the flow only in one direction. That is from upper chamber to the lower chamber. Then is right auricle and left auricle. Now we talk about number 11, 12, 13 and 14. The upper two chambers are known as, are known as auricles. And the lower two chambers, this 13 and 14 are known as ventricle. So this comes the name right auricle, left auricle, right ventricle and left ventricle. Then is pulmonary artery which is an exit from uh, this right ventricle and then pulmonary vein which is entry to the left auricle. Okay, now let's see what are the directions of flow of blood in these cases? Okay, first let us repeat this once again for a better understanding. I guess everything has been explained to you. So, for, for a recap, we see pericardial membrane, pericardial fluid, and peri, uh, heart wall. Pericardial membrane, pericardial fluid, and heart wall, these three are for protection of heart superior vena cava inferior vena cava and vena cava this is for this is for collecting blood from the body then comes aorta this is for supply of blood from the heart. Then bicuspid and tricuspid valves. These are unidirectional valves. The right auricle, left auricle, right ventricle and left ventricle. These are four chambers. Pulmonary artery 
एंड पलमनरी वे फॉर एक्सचेंज ऑफ पोजिशन ऑफ ब्लड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ब्लड कलेक्शन ऑफ ब्लड फ्रॉम द बॉडी सप्लाई ऑफ ब्लड फ्रॉम द हार्ट टू द बॉडी यूनिट रिलेशन वर्स द फोर चैम्बर्स एंड दिस हेल्पिंग एक्सचेंज ऑफ पोजिशन ऑफ ब्लड सो नाउ यू आई टेल यू वन मोर थिंग basically heart has two functions first you all know the first function is to pump the blood a second function is which takes place simultaneously during the pumping of the blood is deoxy जीनेटेड ब्लड गेट्स ऑक्सीजीनेटेड विल नॉट टॉक अबाउट इनप्योर और प्योर ब्लड नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट ऑक्सीजीनेटेड एंड डी ऑक्सीजीनेटेड ब्लड वी आर क्लास टेंथ नाउ ओके सो लीव द वर्ड्स एज इनप्योर ब्लड और प्योर ब्लड बेसिकली वेन वी टॉक अबाउट deoxygenated blood that is called impure blood and when we talk about oxygenated one we call it pure blood pure and impure because there is presence or absence of oxygen now let us talk about the directions from where the blood moves in which direction so so this inferior vena cava and superior vena cava brings the blood into the right auricle this is the direction of flow from pulmonary artery this is the direction of flow in the pulmonary vein and this is the direction of flow from aorta this blood comes from blood coming from body think this blood to the lungs this blood is coming from the lungs and this is blood to the body now i have marked a few more things you can see when i came is bringing the blood from the body okay this will be, then this blood will move to the lungs where it will get oxygenated then the blood will come back from the lungs back to the heart and then heart will pump it to the body we will talk about the mechanism of this in the next class till then what you have to do is to remember the markings of the human heart in the next lecture tomorrow we will talk about the functioning of all these take it together and see how the blood comes from the body parts and then delivers gets delivered to the lungs where it takes up oxygen comes back to the heart and then moves away from the heart and this cycle goes on okay till then take care remember the things and we'll meet back in the next class thank you